Chick-fil-A, man. Come on, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. I don't see Pastor David in here, but please whoop as loud for him as you did for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, a little bit louder. Well, hey, uh, as you have a seat, I uh, just want to welcome you back from lunch. My name is Manny. This is my beautiful wife. Tyree. Tyree. Awesome stuff. Uh, so we're going to get to a prize. Another, uh, is it a raffle? In a, in a, in a bit. Uh, the box is over here. I'm going to not try to do a Melinda and exclude two people off the bat. I'm going <laughs> to. Nice. <laughs> So this gift card is to where? This gift card is to one of my favorite spots, Tiger Tea House. Get your boba. Tiger Tea House, yes. That is her favorite spot. I come home with a drink sometimes. She's like, ah. and I'm like, no, it's just a soda. She's like, ah. So she does like it. But hey, uh, so she's, she's, she's going to pick a name. I'm going to open the box. My name's in here, Candace said. <laughs> so if I get it, it's because it, it was default. All right, I'm gonna pick, pick it. Close your eyes. There you go. Just kidding, don't. Get my name. Get my name. Don't close your eyes. I pulled the Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hold on, look at this. Uh, no, it's not you, babe. I'm sorry. <laughs> this actually is to a person who I, the, I believe would actually like this gift a lot Mr. Brian Goldman, our sound <gasps> person right now. Hey! Brian, come on up. Brian, come on up. It's going to be awkward with us standing here with your gift card. <laughs> it's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, wait, no. I want to hold on to your name, though. Cool. Oh. So if, if you don't know Brian, he is, is, is an amazing, uh, reserved, humble man, but he does so many things around here. Uh, so thank you so much, Brian. A little token of appreciation. Now, don't trade that for Taco Bell. I know you're probably tempted to, but don't do it. Uh, well, hey, uh, I just want to share a little bit about myself and go on the uh, theme of testimonies. I was, uh, so yesterday, a word from uh, uh, Pastor Dave was really good. It was really powerful. I, I was reminded uh, when I was in junior high, I went to a retreat years ago, and there was a speaker there who, during a prayer time, he looked out onto the crowd and he saw my face. And he said, uh, you, sir, you're going to be a great speaker one day. And at the time, I, w I did not believe him because I grew up with a pretty bad stutter. And I was like, I don't know who you're talking to. This kid uh, stutters a lot. I don't want to talk in front of people at all. So you're going to say, I'm going to? Like, you're, you, you got the wrong person. But I was just reminded of how it is important to... Uh, that how our self-talk is so important, and I just want to remind all of us that if anybody here has ever been given a word by somebody, to remember that word and to hold on to that word. I am reminded in, in Genesis when um, in, in, uh, Abram, who then was a Abraham, was told something, he built an altar in that spot so that as he wandered around and lived his life, when he saw that altar, he would re, 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 excuse me, be reminded of the promise that God had given him years ago. So I just encourage anybody here that if you were ever given a word um, to remember that word, that the word is still alive, it is still inside of you, and God still wants to have that fruit come to fruition. So for me, I, <clears throat> I was try I've been trying to think since yesterday when he gave the message that, Lord, <laughs> so I'm going to be real with you guys. He told us to stand up. I stood up, and I acted like I didn't want to stand up initially. So I acted like someone was on my shoe. So then I was like, I'll oh, just stand up, Lord. Because listen, a few years ago, 10 years ago to be exact, the Lord had said, I had told the Lord, use me, mold me, and break me. And he did that. And I said, never again. Never again will I tell the Lord that because he will do it. Won't he do it? Okay. And so I think when we were challenged yesterday or, you know, told to, to rise up, I felt like he said, rise up. I didn't want to rise up. I, I don't want to rise up to that calling. But we're called. 
we're all called. And I just want you all to be able to remember to step into that, step into that and walk into that. Because right now I'm struggling, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it and I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to be doing it until I'm not called to do it, which is never, right? Because we're all called. We are his children. We are kings. We are queens. We are royals. That's what we're called to do. And so I know my calling is to serve him. I know my calling is greater than I am, but I don't want that calling. And so I'm going to rise up and I'm going to step into that. And I just want you all to remember to rise up, to say yes when we don't want to say yes, because we're going to miss an opportunity. And so that's it. Absolutely. That is awesome. You guys are so sweet. Um, good afternoon. Praise the Lord for games. Are you guys game people? <laughs> no. <laughs> game people are very much, n or non-game people are very much non-game people. I got verbally assaulted by Chad because of how he thought I did a poor job of explaining raking leaves. Chad comes in with the game energy like you've never seen. If you guys want to see some energy, go talk to Chad and play a game with him and maybe slightly do a little bit bad and you will feel the energy. Um, I'm super glad to be here today. I, get, I have a, a little bit of a short session. We're going to do a shorter session, but I want to first pause and say hi to our online folk. If you are watching online, hi, welcome. We're glad that you're here. I want to say hi to my girl Marina because she has been texting me all morning. Every time something's good, I get some fire emojis in my text because she's just like, that choir, you know, she's just like going off. And so I'm very, very grateful that our online people are experiencing the community. So thank you guys. Please text a friend if you're watching online. Text somebody if it's good. I want to know why someone didn't introduce you. Oh, because it's not on the list. <laughs> Do you know who's in charge of the order of service? <laughs> so I want to introduce to you today our executive pastor, Candace Cortez. She's the one that made this conference happen. She's carried all of the pieces. She has put it all together. We want to say a huge thank you to her for all of her work, her vision, and all the things she oversees in this church. Thank you, Candace. You are the bomb. Thank you, sir. Well, geez. Um, that is not true. I'm part of an incredible team. Um, an incredible team. And so, how dare you? I had the game vibe, <laughs> now I have feelings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's pray. That's my way. Here we go. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us to look back well. Help us to be people, just like uh, Pastor Manny said, we're people who we look back well at the moments that were monumental in our lives. And I pray right now that we would look back at this past year and we would recount. We would not allow the enemy to waste the lessons we've learned this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you guys have a way, like, when, like, things are out of control, you just, like, let's pray? Like, that's me every time. Youth, the poor youth kids, every time they would get out of control, I'm like, we're going to pray. <laughs> so we prayed in the middle of games. We prayed in the middle of the sermons. We prayed a lot because it's just my way. Um, we're going to look back um, and just kind of, I want to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of how Quinnia is doing. Um, I was just at, uh, we had the CLN prayer gathering with pastors and leaders from around Kings County. And when you get people of like-minded nature in the room together, there is an increase of honesty, right? Because I'm not, I'm no longer overly sensitive of, uh, that my words are actually going to move them away from Christ. I know that my words are going to probably just bring us together. So there's a little bit of increased honesty. And there was a pastor, he came to me and he was like, how are you doing? And I knew immediately there was a tone that it wasn't just like I'm fine you know it wasn't one of those how you doings it was how are you doing 
And it was just immediately, that's just like one of those moments where I knew that he had been through something this past year, and I have too been through something this past year. And so I want to just let you guys know how we are doing as a church body. From my perspective, I have a unique perspective because I'm both a member of this church, but I also work in the office with your incredible staff. And so I get to see some of the back end stuff. I also watch the finances. I also watch some of the different ministries that are both um, growing and dying. Like I watch some of these things. So I have a unique perspective. So I want to give you just a little bit of my perspective of how we're doing. Um, and I want to do it through some pictures, okay? Because I want to look back and recognize how crazy this year has been. How crazy it has been. When I think about the bazillion different ways we've done church, it makes me um, angry, <laughs> it makes me laugh, and it makes me cry because I'm so thrilled and proud of where we are today and how many hurdles we miraculously, because of the grace of God, we jumped through to get to where we are right here and now today. So, um, this is one of, this was Pastor Andrew's last message that he taught, um, and then he went off on vacation. And while he was on vacation, um, he went to Europe um, where there was this thing called the coronavirus. And I didn't know what it was. I was like, corona, like the beers, like that's the only source of corona I had ever heard of. And so I was just like, okay, so he's, he's in Europe. Okay, cool, cool. So then I get this um, text from him and he's like, hey, um, so it's bad. And so here, I might not get back because they were shutting down the airports. And so then I'm like, cool. I taught a message. He was on vacation. I got to stand here and preach the word of God. It's always an honor. And then on Tuesday, I go to staff meeting and I got, I got to tell them we have three options, y'all. We get to pray that Andrew makes it back and have church. Amen. Hallelujah. Option number two, Andrew doesn't make it back. And I got to figure out what to say again, two times in a row. I don't do that. So I got to like dig deep. You know, that's option number two. Option number three is our doors will be closed and we'll have to figure out because we didn't know what the mandates were about to be. We were hearing like, hey, what is it closing? What are we doing? There's a virus. It's Corona. You know, like, and so we had no idea at that moment what was about to happen. Luckily, Andrew came back. It was great. And, um, but the doors are closed. So it was like a blend of option one and option three. And so for the first time um, in March, we closed our doors and did service purely online. And so there's a picture of me and Sylvia. Um, so we closed our doors. We did church online. You can see the empty auditorium. It was weird. I'll tell you, the feeling being in this room, Sunday morning, I come in with a Sunday morning energy because this is what the Lord has called me to do. And when you step into your calling, there's just like something like, ah, you know? So I come in with my Sunday morning enthusiasm and it's empty. And it was weird. I have to tell you, it was weird. But then, because some of y'all missed the memo, it just is part of the thing. You know, we emailed, we texted, we, we called you. You guys heard Brian's voice on your phone. Like, we did all the things we could do to get the word out to you. But then me and Sylvia's job was to wait outside in the parking lot because we knew we'd miss people. And so we just got to catch the people who didn't catch the memo. We prayed for people. And we received some offering, which was really cool. And um, just kind of allowed um, the moment to really sink in. And it was weird. It was weird. And in my mind, it was going to be very short. Did you guys have that? Yeah, this is going to be very short. I'll go to the next one. Um, but it wasn't very short. We just started. So this is us, social distancing. You're going to get a lot of selfies because that's, that's how I take pictures. <laughs> I'm in all of them. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, this is us, social distancing on the stage. We didn't really know how to do this thing. And so we were trying to figure out how to do church distance. We were trying to figure out how to do church safe. We are trying to figure out how to do church well and honoring the Father, while also honoring um, our partners in local government, okay? Our relationship with our local government has always been a good one, okay? They invite us to pray at their things. They, they affirm us on a regular basis. We were calling them like, hey, how should we be doing church in, in your opinion? And so our, we wanted to keep that relationship very strong, and so we weren't really interested in totally disregarding it unless it countered what we felt like God was telling us to do. And so in working on that relationship, we did weird things like that. We stood really apart from each other. You know what I mean? And then this is my kid. He's doing breakout online. It was just such a weird time. But, but honestly, as a parent and as a person, I had never seen him do a breakout class. And so in this moment, I got to see him do a breakout class. And I'll tell you, Miss Penny, um, Glenn and Susie, they did an amazing job. <laughs> you guys are so creative. 
You were incredibly creative with the way that you led our kids. <laughs> They went above and beyond and they were doing these like puppet shows online and making sure that my son sitting here on his couch, no longer getting to go into his class with his, his fellow breakout teachers, he was still engaged. He was still engaged. So then I got to see the power of our Quinnia leadership. I got to see it. It was a bummer, but there was blessings in it. There was blessings in it. We'll go to the next one. Next picture. Okay, so then we started do, doing weird things, guys. It just got weirder, okay? It just got weirder after that. We were like, let's put different sets on stage. Not just one, but two. So at one point, we had a stage design over here, and then over here, we had another one because we didn't know how to like move the cameras fast enough. That's the reason, just so you guys know. So, so Andrew would teach over here, and worship would happen over here, and we couldn't figure, so we were, um, we were doing set, set stuff. You can see them back there. And then we did church kind of in the middle of the auditorium. We did it in this round thing, which is so creative. Thank you, Alfred and Brian and Cynthia and Genesis, all the people who just started digging into creativity. Digging in to creativity. We're like, you know what? Our God made the platypus and the eyeball. You know what I mean? Like, He made all things. Not everything He made, we understand. Okay? He made all things. So we can take this situation and go forward. We can go forward. And I just saw you guys going forward. I saw you guys going forward, and it was incredible, and it was hard. It was hard. We'll go to the next one. Um, we started doing drive through things. Also weird. <laughs> so this, yeah, so we were like ice cream, social distance style, like trying to be cute. And so people were driving by in their cars and some people had masks. Some people were like, don't touch me. Other people were like, we're over it. You know, like it was such a mixed bag. And so we're just trying to be respectful of everybody. And so we're like, no hugging. Okay. Hugging. Okay. You know, like we we're just like a great sense of insecurity. Like, how do I love? I no longer know how to love people. You know, it's just so, so awkward. But we, people, drove up and then we did this breakout graduation in the rain can I give it up for our team who did it in the rain you guys are incredible incredible and that wasn't the only service we did in the rain keep going um, so then we did this one service, batch of services, where we could only have 100 people. So then the mandates changed. You can have 100 folks in your building. I'm like, in our whole building? Like, I just kept asking, our whole building? And I kept saying that, like, not just 100 um, congregants, but 100 souls, like 100 humans. Like, it just it could not compute to me because our building is big. <laughs> like, it, I could not get into my mind, so I just said, okay. This is one of the seasons when I realized, number one, um, this is weirder than I would like. This isn't the area that I would prefer to be in. Um, so we did this thing where people had to get tickets to go to church, and I will tell you, uh, <laughs> it rubbed me the wrong way, and I kept telling Andrew, I was like, this is not right, and I would cry to him. I was like, what about just so-and-so walking off the street like I was like crying in his office all the time because this burdened me because <laughs> my goal is to have the doors open so if they're going to be opened at all I want them opened all the way and having tickets made them feel like just for those who know this was a struggle for me personally but praise the God praise the God who reigns in heaven and earth we made it through that season too <laughs> okay we made it through that we did the weirdest thing ever okay and then we started doing this <laughs> We started like, <laughs> it was mass. And I mean, we had cutesy signs like, we mask because we care. You know, like we had, we were doing our best to make sure that we didn't dip into despair, quite frankly, because <laughs> this stuff is weird, right? But we did whatever we could, whatever we could, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes is kind of where we sit. What does it take? What do I got to do? What do I got to do to serve my people? What do I have to, what do I need to, you know, I don't know. Like I was coming up with all sorts of scenarios. Like how far would I go in order to love my community? I would go pretty far, guys. I would go pretty far. I would give it all. And so this stuff that felt ridiculous wasn't that bad once I realized I would give it all. Next one. Um, then we started this campaign. We got kind of creative. And we were like, you know what? Let's make sure that our church is loving their neighbors since they can't kind of say hi to each other in the building. Let's make sure that they're going out and knocking on their neighbors because then we started really feeling the power of isolation, the negative power of isolation. We started getting those texts and calls from some of our friends. And so we started this thing where we, we, we gave a list of every single person in our church database and we just started calling all of them. 
every single one. And there's like eight, was it 8,000, Miss Deborah? It was a lot of folk. And we just started calling through. How are you doing? How are you? Is there anything you need? You need toilet paper? Because some people, you know? And, um, and so then we realized, oh, if we can only have 100 people in the building, we got two buildings. So then we got creative. We're like, well, we'll do church over here, and then we'll pipe it over there. And that was really weird. Did anybody do church in the great room? It piped in. Yeah, that was weird. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit was there. <laughs> but we just started putting an emphasis on loving our neighbors. We put an emphasis there. And I'm proud of you guys. Because you guys did it. You, I, I was hearing a story. So it wasn't even just me. I was hearing stories of like so-and-so. Somebody tagged us in something like, Quinnia Church did this. I'm like, we didn't do that. They were giving us credit. It was you guys doing things to love your literal neighbors, your, your um, metaphorical neighbors, the people in your world. You guys are going out and doing the thing. So thank you guys so much for not allowing the, the power of isolation to negatively impact this body. You guys went out there and you loved each other. Way to go. Next one. We did, um, during, we started doing conferences. We were like, you know what? Whatever, COVID, we're going to do conferences. You know, like we're going to just have conferences. Here we go. And so then we had this unity and diversity when we realized we needed to make sure that we were not being silent in a season where the world needed clarity when it comes to how to love people who are different than you. And so we did this unity and diversity conference. This was Emerging Leader last year, me and Pastor Brian. And if you look on the other side of the camera, it's basically just wires and Jeremy, Melinda, and Andrew sometimes. Like it was really lonely. So I'm so excited to be here with you guys today because Emerging Leader last year was awesome but weird. Awesome but weird. Okay, next one. Then we started doing, because they said we couldn't sing inside. They said we couldn't sing inside, but we can be inside, but we couldn't sing inside. We were like, okay, okay, well, what is worship? Right? You just start asking hard questions. Well, what is worship? Do we got to sing to worship or can we do it in a different way? And luckily, the Lord gives us a pretty long list of how he likes to be praised, and some of them are not singing. So we came in here and we stood and we clapped, <laughs> right? We, st- we, we came in here and we started just saying the scriptures, saying it, not chanting it, you know? And, you know, we just started doing different things. We were like, what is worship? We had to, we had to sharpen our understanding of our theology. Way to go. We had to figure this out. And so then we were like, well, since we can't sing inside, we can sing outside. Let's do that. That's way less weird than trying not to chant scripture. So we, um, we had service in here. Andrew would teach, and then we would go outside. And then we realized, well, we can do that twice. And so we th- then we started this worship sandwich, is what we were calling it, where we, were, we came in for the word, we went outside for the songs, we came back in for the word, and some people did it twice, and I'm confused about y'all, but, um, <laughs> but we did it. And then this is when we got really good about doing um, recorded services because if you look, when, when I look back at 2019 at how our online service consistency went, online services were not consistent for us. It was not a strong suit. And so there was often Sundays when our online service would not be available because of X, Y, Z. I don't pretend to understand what those letters mean, but there's reasons, okay? And so we did not have a lot of hope or excitement about our church not having access to the word of God. And so we put a lot of emphasis on making sure it was going to be available and consistent. That's why we stepped away from live, rec- like live um, feeds and went into pre-recorded because we wanted to guarantee that you would have church on a Sunday morning in your home with your family. That's why we made that choice. It was a hard choice for us because it does feel a little bit canned, okay? And we, we're not canned people. Like, that's not who we are, but it, it gave us a guarantee that you were going to have worship, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to guarantee that you would have the Word of God taught by your pastoral le- leadership in your home, so that's why we did it that way, and then I think I just have a couple more. We, we kept baptizing, you guys. We called our health department. We were like, can we put them in water? We'll up the chlorine. We'll put on a mask. You know, like, whatever it takes, we're gonna, we want to dunk folks, because that's what Jesus says to do. Once you get saved, they need to be baptized. So we did. We started doing worship over across the way. We had the guys move the green awning. This is before we had the tent. They moved the green awning and it was hideous. And I was like, can you move it back? Like, I don't like it. So we did lots of stuff. Go ahead. The next one. Um, we had, when we started renovations, um, cause I will tell you guys during, um, especially during the beginning of COVID, your gener- your generosity was outstanding. Your generosity was outstanding. Um, 
And so we were like, well, let's go ahead and use our empty space time wisely and let's paint the ceiling. So we painted the ceiling. We did some stuff. We had staff retreat. Look at this all distancy. We had staff retreat over at Andrew's house outside because we were like, we don't want to be knocked out by this thing and we don't want to be able to keep, we don't want to be kept from um, preaching the word of God. So let's just do the best we can. Um, then we started doing funny things. This is my son, Jer. Um, and he, you know, loves air high fives. We we're just trying to make the best of the weirdest situation we've ever been in. We gave out a lot of donuts. We got into AM radio station vibes, you know, just like, hey, tune in. And if that doesn't work, because it never did, we, you just open your windows, you know, like <laughs> it was just awesome. It was so great. And then we got a tent, praise the Lord. The tent kind of changed things for us. It was cold. It was cold in that tent. So if you came early, you got a seat by the heater. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Moving on. <laughs> and then it got windy and rainy. There was like seven tumbleweeds. Of, I was like, I've never seen a tumbleweed at our church. But then COVID happens and we're just like worshiping with the tumbleweeds. And it was just, you know, the season. Then we got to come back in for certain portions, but we were super distanced. We kind of had some signs like, you know, sit with your people, do the thing. You know, like we're trying to figure out a way. Number one, we don't want to be offensive. Okay, we don't want to be offensive. That's not our goal. But we also don't want to be disregarding of everything that might make sense. Some of these things, but nothing really made sense. But we're just doing our best. Um, then we had Christmas Eve outside. These are all not my pictures because that's when I had COVID. So I was stuck at home, not able to do Christmas Eve. And I was so sad. Um, but these are, you guys just made it beautiful. You guys came out and made it beautiful. So thank you guys. And then um, this was our very first Sunday being able to sing inside. And I will tell you those moments, the moment that they guys, the guys have all been talking about moments that mark you. I will tell you there was, there's been two moments specifically this moment when I was sat, this is the only photo I got. And I take like 1200 photos a Sunday, but this is the only thing I got because I was so enthralled with the power of God, lining it up perfectly. We had like two drops of rain and we were like, it's time to go in. And so <laughs> the two drops of rain, we came inside and it was just brilliant to be able to worship and hear the team. I was stalling. I was just, you know, trying to speak prophetic installing, you know, while the team plugged in everything. And it was just this moment where we realized whatever it takes often translates um, into faithfulness, which will translate into the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit's going to show up when you stay faithful. When you kind of say, whatever it takes, Jesus, that's pick up my cross attitude. Pick up my cross, God. What do you want? Whatever it takes. Do that faithfully and you're going to get fruit. And then this was last night. Um, it has not been easy. But man, looking at this, it, I, all I can do is celebrate. All I can do is celebrate because of how resilient you are, how resilient our staff has been. So I don't have a lot more time, but I want to go over just a couple numbers. Um, the Lord has been doing crazy good things crazy good things. We, um, and, and since shutdown, we have had more than um, 160 salvations. Now, those are people who have said, <laughs> that's people who have said, I got saved. I don't know how many people y'all prayed with and then they didn't text us. You know what I mean? Like, I'm assuming you guys are praying with your neighbors and getting them saved. You know what I mean? But that's the amount of text and people who check the card, 160 salvations. We baptized 20, um, between 28 and 35 people. We just baptized some people, and I don't know how many people it was. Um, we've dedicated babies. Um, we've had more than 150 new people come and start worshiping with us, which is incredible. Those are people who, a lot of them are not from other churches. Some of them are, but a lot of them are brand new. They're just like, I know nothing about the Bible. And let me tell you, that'll get you pumped. That'll get you pumped to keep doing the, keep doing the thing. It's like, you know nothing about the Bible. Okay, let's go and do it. Um, we started KSM. And so we started KSM. It's Quinnia School of Ministry. And um, it's, it's been an incredible time of 
of honing in what we believe and why. And how do you know it? How do you find it? How do you apply it? And so KSM is still going. We just started our second year, and it's not too late to join in. If you want to be a part of Koinonia School of Ministry, it's an incredible, incredible tool to create, number one, discipleship between your brethren, but also a great understanding of your own personal theology. Like, not your own personal theology. I want to, um, because we don't get our own personal theology. We, We surrender to the Lord's understanding understanding of how he works. But you'll understand it more. You'll understand where it comes from, how we found that in scripture. So um, KSM has been good. I want to tell you guys that in the beginning of shutdown, your generosity was exceptional. And then a lot of things happened where a lot of people were offended. A lot of people were insecure and a lot of people were afraid. And so we saw a pretty significant dip in our giving. And so I'm, I am the executive pastor, so the finances are the thing that I look at um, very, very often. And so I had to send a message to our staff, and I was like, hey, guys, we need to um, button it down. Like, stop spending money. Don't spend money, you know, <laughs> because I want to make sure that we're going to make this through the long haul. If there's a dip, I don't think that that dip comes from Jesus. I think that that dip comes from just the reality of the season. So I'm not really afraid because God has said we're going we're gonna to live through this. However, we need to be faithful stewards. And so just like when I personally go through a hard time, I turn off Netflix, right? Because it's like an extra 14 bucks. And so we just started turning things off. We just started uh, dialing it back because we're in this for the long haul. And so we've had to pull s- some stuff back in order to make sure that we're going to make it. And I'll tell you, just in this last quarter, and I think especially since we're seeing some growth growth because our services are more open and available and our children's ministry is open and available, we're seeing that that percentage start to climb back in the right direction, which is exciting. It's exciting for us as a church because we kind of got down to around 15% deficit and now we're, we're hovering at around um, 8 to 10, which is just miraculous. Those are good things, guys. We're celebrating these things, but we're in this season right now. We're in this season right now where we are feeling um, the pressure of the, the, the new season, there's a couple things that have happened, and I just, um, how much time do I have? I don't have a timer. <sighs> I can't do math on the fly. You guys know this. I'm out of time. Praise the Lord. Okay. There's this thing I want to do right now. We're in, we're in this pressure season when um, we're, we're continuing to move forward in what God is doing, but a, a long season off has created a little bit of a problem for us when it comes to um, certain areas of ministry, specifically in family ministry. Um, right now we have services open for children just in our 11 p.m. Uh, 11 a.m. service, um, and that's primarily because that's how many people have volunteered. That's how many people have volunteered. We will have nine nine o'clock service available for our children as soon as we have the volunteers. Um, and there's nothing there's nothing else I can do about that other than just say we'll open when you guys say yes. Um, and so I'm just going to ask you as your executive pastor, will some of you guys say yes? Um, we need to open up that extra uh, service of classrooms because we see families being ministered to at a different level when we can care for their kids at another level. And that's what we believe in. We believe that kids need Jesus and we believe their parents need Jesus. And we want to get that second service open because we're going to start to close classrooms more often. We're going to start to hear babies in this room distracting us more often. Um, And so what I would love for you to consider, I'm going to give you guys uh, 30 seconds to a minute right now. I want you to look in your book um, and write down your prayer for your church. But I want to just ask you, sometimes there are seasons when we, we do the thing that we know that God has built us to do, right? Like Alfred Gomez is a worshiper, okay? That is obvious. But sometimes Alfred Gomez has to clean the toilets, right? You know, like sometimes somebody who is gifted for something that's obvious, when there's a need, you got to do the other thing. And so just for this season, some of us don't like kids' ministry. I love kids, but kids' ministry is not my favorite. That's why I'm a youth pastor or an executive pastor. But there are seasons when we have a need. Okay, there are seasons when the floor is dirty, so we've got to clean it. And this is one of those seasons. We want to get to a place, and I want to invite you guys into considering, how do I engage at another level? And some of that engagement might be and feel sacrificial at this point. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with asking for a little bit of sacrifice from our family. Um, And you guys are our leaders. And so I do want to encourage you to consider, um, because we have so much to celebrate, and I don't want to be stopped by a wall of apathy. Okay, I don't want to be stopped by a wall of disengagement or a wall of somebody else will do it. Um, So can you give six months? Can you give a year? It doesn't have to be forever, but can you give a chunk of time and say, I'll hold a baby, I'll teach a class. Okay, it does not have to be forever, but I want to open up 9 a.m. 
I want to get it open so then I can say, there's a lot more space here because I believe that we should be filling this room both services. Okay, that's what I believe. So um, I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds. They're going to play some music. But just in your book, what I want you to do is to write down my prayer for my church. We just walked through. This is how we got through. We did all the things. We adapted. We, you know, we diversified. We did all this stuff. But now we're looking ahead. Where are we going and what's my hope for what's ahead? What is my hope? My hope is for families. My hope is for the lost to feel totally welcome and encouraged when they come here. Both services. Um, and my hope for, is for our church to be fully engaged in that kingdom and missional mindset. So for 30 seconds, write a prayer to your church or to God about your church. If you want to say yes to doing children's, youth, maybe guest services, it doesn't have to be kids, but I want to tell you guys, um, it, it is time to re-engage. Pastor Andrew talked to us about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just want to invite you. You're invited. A while ago, um, somebody said, can the people who pray come on forward? And it was like me and a few others. And I want to tell you, you're the people who pray. <laughs> Whenever somebody's asking, hey, I need some help, who's, who's available? It's you. Um, you're the people. You're our leaders. You're our church. And we all do this together. Um, it's not Andrew's job. It's not my job. We are a family. So thank you guys so much for making it through this past year, for jumping through the hoops, for loving on your community. Um, keep praying for us as a church body, and uh, let's see where God's taking us in this next stage. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I am new to Koinonia. I've only been here since February of 2021. I've been in KSM since... It started in August 2020, the inaugural class. Yes. Yes. So join if you haven't joined. It's awesome. Um, Pastor Candace asked me to just say a quick testimony, and I'm going to get you guys on a break because you guys got to be back at 110. So I'm going to try to stick to time. Um, I was involved in a recovery program called Celebrate Recovery. Does anybody know what Celebrate Recovery is here? If you haven't been involved in it, I definitely recommend it. The eighth principle, Celebrate Recovery is a program for people that are struggling with any hurts, habits, or hangups, and it's biblically based with the 12 steps as well as eight principles. So the eighth principle in Celebrate Recovery is yield yourself to God to bring the good news to others through your actions and your words. It's based on the Beatitude, Matthew 5.10, blessed, excuse me, happy are the persecuted for they do what God requires. So at the church I was at before I came here, I was asked by the pastor to lead and facilitate a small group that we were doing a church-wide study called Rooted. If anybody's heard of Rooted, it's an awesome program. However, somebody that struggles like me with sexual immorality, alcoholism, addiction to porn, addiction to having to be the best at everything, was a request that I was not quite ready for. I was very nervous, I was scared, I didn't think my house was good enough, I didn't think I was good enough to help anybody. And I was nervous, but I said yes, because I had learned that I have to yield myself to God, and I have to tell the good news, and I have to tell my story, just like all of you have a story. So that's my testimony. I'm keeping working with as much as I can do. I'm involved in the youth ministry now. I do the KSM. I'm in Flourished, and that's about it for right now. So, okay. Um, but you guys have until 110 to come back, so use the restroom, please. 105, forgive me, 105, please come back. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs>